Hello, I'm Philip Brunel, Artistic Director and Founder of Vocal Essence and Organist Choir Master at Plymouth Congregational Church in Minneapolis. So each day I have over the course of more than 200 composers selected one that's had a role to play at these two organizations. Some of the composers are no longer with us, some are very much alive. Today it's one from the past, Sir Arthur Bliss, the English composer and conductor, born in 1891, died in 1975. He wrote a lot of music for orchestra, uh, very colorful music. Uh, for a number of years, in his later years, his music sort of faded away. We didn't hear much about it, but it's come back now in recent years. After World War II, he became director of music for the BBC. And it was in 1953, at the time of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II, that he became master of the Queen's music. <laughs> This is a ceremonial title, but it's one that, depending on the occasion and depending on the ruler, uh, calls for music to inaugurate a ship, to inaugurate uh, a bridge. Uh, perhaps it's for a festival service. Could be any number of occasions. And this kind of thing, Sir Arthur Bliss was very good at writing. He wrote early on a concerto for wordless tenor with piano and strings, and then wrote another one for wordless soprano called Rout. In 1922, he wrote a piece that took the world kind of by storm because of its title. It was called a color symphony. It was in four movements, each movement devoted to a color. However, he felt that it expressed that, purple, red, blue, and green. And in 1930, he wrote a piece called Morning Heroes, which was a piece in memory of those who had died in World War I, a piece for narrator, chorus, and orchestra. We had the privilege at Vocal Essence of performing this piece at Orchestra Hall back in the 90s, and our narrator was none other uh, than James Earl Jones. He also wrote in 1970 a piece called The World is Charged with the Grandeur of God, words of Gerard Manley Hopkins, three movements, and a piece that we have performed as well. Uh, Sir Arthur Bliss did not write easy music for choir. It's wonderful and festive and big, but it's challenging. So at the opening, just imagine the first words that the chorus sings, the world is charged with the grandeur of God, you have this. And then the brass come in and do this. And then it moves into all kinds of angular things. It will flame out like shining from shook foil. That kind of, you know, very, very dramatic writing. That makes the first movement. The second movement of this beautiful little piece is just for the women's voices with two flutes. So the two flutes kind of, um, well, sort of like angel's wings, go back and forth. At the very beginning, just before the voices come in, you hear them going. And then the women come in.
it's in a way the most tonal of the three movements. And then the third movement, another Gerard Manley Hopkins poem, look at the stars, look up at the skies, oh, look at all the fire folk sitting in the air. And the writing here, the brass do this introduction, And then the choir. So you get the idea of the drama of Sir Arthur Bliss's music. But he also wrote a very serene piece based on the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. This one, unaccompanied, just for soprano, soprano, alto, alto, with the text, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. And the end of it, which I'm going to play now, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and that it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And then an amen that repeats. And then the amens. Music of Sir Arthur Bliss. Have a wonderful day.